Microsoft Purview collection policies. What are they? What do they do? Stay tuned to find out. Another of the newer Microsoft Purview features that are available are collection policies. Now you can find these in the Purview portal under solutions and information protection. Go to classifiers. Go down the list of classifiers until you see collection policies. Let's open that up and it tells us what this is all about. Now this is going to enable us to control the data and user activities to detect across a range of Microsoft Purview policies and analytics such as Activity Explorer. And as ever, there's links to learn documentation to what collection policies is all about. We do have some informational alerts here which are telling us in this instance to be mindful of how collection policy settings affect other policies and analytics tools. For example, modifying the activities detected in a collection policy can also change the activities identified in an insider risk management policy. Interesting. And some collection policy features are pay as you go, so your org will be charged based on usage. I, in this demonstration, I'm going to go to uh, every length possible to avoid that because I don't like spending money. But let's take a look and see what this is all about. And as is often the case on this channel, I am seeing this as you are seeing this, so I'm learning as you are learning. So let's create a collection policy. Let's give it a name. We'll call it call call poll one. There you go. As ever, I'm going to be lazy and not put a description in the real world. Please always do. Data to detect. Choose the data you want this policy to detect. And we've got another information alert here that if you don't add conditions, what gets detected depends on the activity type you choose, which is the next step. There we go. So for device activity, all data is detected, even if it doesn't match your organization's classifiers. For other activity types, only data that matches your org's classifiers is detected. Well, let's go ahead and add a condition. And we can see we've got some choices here. So we can go for the content contained. So that's going to take us to the usual sensitive information types and whatnot, I would expect. Uh, we'll probably have a look at that one in a moment. Document size equals or is greater than. That's interesting. So it's going to do uh, equals or greater than or equals and smaller than. Or the file extension is. So you can do it by file extension if you want to look for all Word docs like docx or Excel, Excel, SX, et cetera, et cetera, or PDFs, and so on and so forth. But let's go for um, a common example. Um, we'll go for content contains and classifiers, uh, all items, and edit. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so the scope for classifiers. Trainable classifiers are not supported by devices and will be ignored. Fair enough. All are selected at the moment. We can click to exclude some. So let's go and see. Oh, okay, I see. So you can go in and you can select the ones that you don't want uh, explicitly exclude. Uh, that's interesting. Or you can actually specifically include certain classifiers. So... Let's uh, do a search for Algo United Kingdom because I'm sure I've got that sorted somewhere. What is UK in this? I'm, I'm sure there are. Let's just go passport. Is the bum, bum, bum. scroll down? Oh, US UK passport number. Let's have a look for that. I'm sure I've got that in some of my policies somewhere. Or oh, maybe it's in my documents, shall I say, more appropriately. Even I'm forgetting what I'm doing here. This this is going to look in documents. It's not going to refer to other policies in purview. Duh, doofus. Okay. Is there anything else that I might have put in things in this tenant? I don't know. Let's just try it. Okay, let's just go for that. We'll include that classifier. Can we mix and match? I'm guessing that we can. So we'll add another condition. Document size equals or is greater than. What does it do here? Oh, it gives you the choice to choose bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. Only going up to terabytes. So let's just put something in just out of 
out of interest. Okay, uh, let's add another condition. Well, let's go for the file extension and let's put in a, I'm going to separate it by comma there. Let's just go doc x comma pdf. Let's add that in and there we go. And I think that, do you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to, I'm a bit worried it won't detect anything with that. So I might just select all classifiers and just see what it comes up with. Let's go to next. Activities to detect. Choose the activities you want this policy to detect. Let's see what choices we have got. Wow, we've got a ton of stuff here. Text sent to or shared with cloud or AI app. Cool. File uploaded to or shared with cloud or AI app. This is going to be so useful. Imagine you uploading a file or files to Copilot, for example, as I did yesterday, uh, and asked Copilot to analyze those files and give me some ideas on responding to certain criteria. Okay, cool. Text received from file downloaded, archive created. Wow, there's a plethora of information in here that we can select. We could do file modified. We've got the category here, devices, cloud apps, generative AI and devices seem to be the, the types that are available to us. Let's have a look and let's just out of interest, see if I can select that one. And let's go add, there we go. Let's click next. And next, choose the data sources. So um, what we got, what we got. Choose the data sources where you want this policy to detect your specified data and devices, sorry, activities even. And based on your settings, we recommend you add cloud apps or generative AI data sources to this policy. Okay, so it already seems to have devices in here. So let's add in... Um, Okay, so we've got connected data sources, devices is there. Copilot experiences includes Copilot and Fabric and security Copilot only. More experiences coming soon. Enterprise AI, so that's non Copilot AI apps that are onboarded and connected to your org using methods like entry, registration, and data connectors. Okay, unmanaged cloud apps. Let's see what we've got in here. Lots and lots to choose from. Uh, box Chat GPT. Let's select Chat GPT as an example. Uh, Deep Seeks in there. DuckDuckGo. Haven't heard of that one for a while. Facebook Messenger. Wow, lots going on in there. Adaptive App Scopes. So, what have we got in here? All unmanaged AI apps we can choose. Um, okay, so. Let's go with that and see what we have got. Um, so we've got those added in. Chat GPT says scope separately. I don't quite know what that means. And I clicked on it and it disappeared. So we'll figure that out. But let's, all oh right, okay. Scope together is now there. Scope together. What happens if I click that? Oh, I, all right, I got you. I got you. And just. Yeah, weird, but I think I get it. Let's go next, see what happens. Decide whether to capture content from AI interactions. What is it all about? To help comply with regulatory requirements, you can capture and store all detected AI prompts and responses. This makes it easy to discover and protect the captured content later with additional purview policies. So to capture the content on the data to detect step, you must scope the content contains condition to all and on the where to apply step only select generative AI. Okay. So capture content, AI prompts and responses will be captured and available to discover and protect. Doesn't include content in shared files. Don't capture content. AI interactions that match your circuit classifiers will be detected, but might not be captured. Let's click on capture content, go next. Choose how to detect unmanaged cloud apps uh, and whether you want to detect sensitive data shared with the selected unmanaged cloud apps through browser network or both. And little information here, detecting cloud app activity over the network 
as a pay as you go capability you'll be charged based on usage that worries me greatly uh browser is in preview so detect sensitive data shared with unmanaged cloud apps through the edge browser one on a managed device currently only applies to chat gpt deep seek google gemini and copilot so the more well-known ones and also in preview is the network preview i'm going to untick that because i don't want to get any pay as you go detect sensitive data on managed cloud apps through browsers and more integrated secure service edge services provider let's turn that off because i don't want to know about paying any money next choose a policy mode turn it on uh it'll be turned on when it's created keep it off settings will be saved but inactive till you turn it on we'll turn it on review yeah i'm happy with that let's go create policy and activate that and let's go see what happens so the policy is created the next steps are to finalize setup to ensure users can't share data in non-edge browsers okay recommendations monitor activity from this policy so monitor activity in uh all right okay we're getting some choices we can monitor it in activity explorer data security posture management or data security posture management for ai i'm going to select activity explorer because because I like that. Um, oh, okay, I see, I see. So it's actually taking me there now, right to Activity Explorer. So let's have a see what is going to happen there. I don't imagine I'll get any instant results, but you never know. All righty, all righty. Okay, so what time are we right now? 9.56, okay. All right, so there's some... Things that have oh archive created, interesting on endpoint devices. So, do I guess that if I click on DSPM for AI, I can go and view what's happening in in DSPM for AI as well? Uh, righty ho, it's not making an awful lot of sense to me, but whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's click done and let's see what we've got in here so this is something that is just going to run and run i'm thinking so we'll have to do some activity to to trigger it so i'm going to pause the video there and we will try and generate some activity that will match the policy and we'll come back okay so what i did was i created a file with my name on it called it Peterizing details, and I put some personal content in it. I put my name and address, my date of birth, and my national insurance number. And then, once I'd done that, I said to Copilot, "Tell me what is in this file. Does it contain sensitive data?" And it accurately says, "Yes, this is what it contains." And it gives me a nice little warning triangle saying it does contain sensitive personal data, including PII, such as full name, address, and date of birth government issued identifier and if you need help securing or redacting this information i can help you with that would you like to anonymize or extract only non-sensitive parts of the document which is which is pretty cool so how does that reflect in activity explorer well it picks it up as well it um because of all the policies i've got created it knows that i created that file so it shows i created that file with the name and the doc extension, the file size, the sensitive info time already uh, recorded there. If I go up to the next one, it shows that I copied that to the cloud, that file name with those details in. If I go up again, it shows that there was a co-pilot interaction which was linked to that. It gives you a record ID for that. So that's pretty cool stuff. So you can see how that is uh, working with this policy and if we just go back in and, and edit that again um, we can just quickly remind ourselves of of what was in it so we had all classifiers detect uh, and it accurately detected the docx i wonder if it would detect if i did an excel document because i've not got that in there it, i'm guessing it probably wouldn't but that's something to test on another day Document size is greater than, and 
texts sent to or shared with the cloud AI app. Yeah, check that uh, ticks that box. File modified or created in this case on the devices. Check that was ticked and uh, it will have ticked the device policy and um, and, and Copilot, so pretty cool. And it captured the content and it enabled me to view that in the Activity Explorer. So uh, that's where I chose to, to view it. I could also look in DSPM for AI or DSPM, I was told. Uh, where that would appear, I am not entirely sure, but I would imagine it would be potentially in reports. So let's have a look. And nothing obvious in there just yet, user. Uh, no, so I think really good, a good start. Uh, but to be refined a bit more and developed. But on the whole, I like that. Well done, Microsoft. So I really like that. Collection policies, I think, is going to be something that's very, very useful in addition to the Microsoft purview suite of solutions. Let me know what you think in the comments. Always eager to hear your experiences and views on these features that we talk about on the channel. Right, I'm going to wind up the video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Please remember to hit the subscribe button if you're going to find yourself visiting regularly and click on the join button to see the various levels of membership available to you as well. I'm looking to add something new there very, very soon. It may, in fact, already be there as this video goes live. So do check that out. Okay, you all take care. Stay safe, travel well. See you next time. Bye-bye.